Hello everybody and welcome to my vlog. Today I am going to an EV show. It's very exciting. I wasn't actually planning on going to an EV show but somebody left their phone there <laughs> yesterday when we were at a different uh, event. So uh, we, we're going back for that which is great because it means I can go and see the EVs and the charging posts and all the rest of it. I don't really have a particular plan for the day so it's just going to be a sort of a a quick run round and we'll see what's there and um yeah it's at the excel center and today's the last day so by the time this video is out it will be too late for you to come as well sorry <laughs> but you can go next year maybe right i audio test time because i'm going to use this mic because these events they're always very noisy and i need to make sure that the audio that i'm recording is actually going to be usable Otherwise, what's the point? See, I'm just going to go get close to the traffic and dance up and down like a maniac. Loads of cars going past. So it's a good opportunity for me to see if this lapel mic that I'm using here is actually going to produce decent audio where you can hear me and also the sound isn't clipped. Always do an audio check. I think our supercharging session should be more or less finished. Let's have a bit of a look around, see what we can see. Very nice, very nice. I love the way the big car companies have all jumped on the EV bandwagon. Mercedes. It's great. I like to see the progress. I remember when these kind of events were a lot smaller and you didn't get big cars like this. Oh, look at that. That's quite... I quite like the look of this, actually. I always quite liked uh, Mercs. And a rental. You know, it's amazing how difficult it has been and how expensive to rent TVs. Presumably, it probably is still quite expensive, but hopefully the price will come down in time. Little delivery EV. City Scoot, food delivery. Cities are in desperate need of a small, easy sort of mobility that can get amongst the traffic unlike big Porsches, which would be quite difficult to get through traffic, I would imagine. Ah, right. Let me guess, is it a plug-in hybrid? I sure don't know. It doesn't look very plug-in hybrid to me. All electric. Wowza. And I thought they said hydrogen was the future. A van. Okay. So just to explain the sort of format for today, because I don't really have a lot of time, this is just a sort of, as I said, a bit of an emergency stop off. It's here, we're here, so why not kind of thing. Um, although I'm sure it'll be quite fun. So I'm just gonna basically scooch around the floor and see all the things I can see, which look good. And we'll take it from there. V has disappeared off somewhere. She is actually trying to find PR departments, maybe to get some um, uh, PR cars to review in the future. We'll see how that goes. This thing looks amazing. Oh, look at the size of the motor on that. Wow. Loads of high voltage orange cabling. This thing's cool. Uh, I would imagine it can take a fairly large load, this. DAF electric truck. Yeah, trucks are terrible polluters, so this is actually a really great idea. And it's amazing what you can do with batteries these days. So presumably the batteries are mainly in here, I would assume, the big battery box. That looks, like, that looks a lot bigger than the electric motor on my Tesla. Like a lot bigger. So <laughs> without a load, that thing must go like a rocket. Salary sacrifice schemes. EVs make great sense for people with small businesses or people that, you know, they, there's a lot of good benefits for them. You're going to find a lot of charging solutions, by the way, at places like this, because it is still one of the main things that people want to sort of worry about when it comes to electric vehicles. I'm pleased I've found my way here, though. You know, I've got a bone to pick with chargers. Probably not these ones. I, I don't know. But certainly, it's at my mum's house, she had a, a charger fitted, and the thing is internet connected. And that's great, except when it was installed, the people that installed it didn't check to make sure it was close enough to the house that it would get decent Wi-Fi signal. So the end result is we've had to put one of her mesh Wi-Fi points in an upstairs windowsill so that it'll connect just about. And every time I go to the app, it says weak connection. 
So it's a bit, it's a bit janky and dodgy. And if it had been just five feet further away from the house, there'd have been no way to connect the thing to the internet which means there'd have been no way to actually charge my car from it and the whole thing would have been a complete and utter white elephant of uselessness which i mean that's, that's really stupid in my opinion like really dumb i don't know how that situation has happened if if the government is mandating that electric vehicle charging points have to be internet connected then they need to pay for a sim card to go into the thing you know, they're the ones that want the data and the control, presumably, over the unit, assuming you don't want that control. That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, my word. That is just... I, I, I'm a sucker for a good rap. Yeah. I don't have a motorbike license, but if I did, I would want to ride an electric one. What else have we got on the floor around here? More delivery trucks. It's actually quite interesting just to sort of walk the floor quickly, because you can really get a sense for how things have shifted and changed as the years have gone by. I mean, certainly this is a much bigger, more corporate event than a lot of the sort of EV shows that I used to go to sort of five, six years ago. Although I really miss the um, EVs in the park one that used to happen in Coventry. That was awesome, had a really lovely feel to it. More of a sort of community outreach really, sort of encouraging the locals to sort of see the wonder that is EVs. And also a really good excuse for a picnic in the park with your EV, which I think was probably the main point for most people that went there. So you also get a lot more variety in the vehicles that are here now actually and that is really nice because that's one of the things that was definitely missing for a long time you know i mean you would rarely find an ev that was that size in fact to be honest you'd you'd, you'd rarely find one that size actually so it's great to see how much it's moved on i wonder if there's a camper van around here i would love an electric camper that's like my actual dream, to one day have a fully electric camper, but not like, I know they do their like the ID buzz, and, but it's too small. I don't want that. I want something the size of over there in the back. That's the size of EV camper I want. It's just, you know, like toilet and a, and a shower. And I mean, that would be awesome. Look at that. Maybe I should try and buy one one day and convert it. You could probably make a business out of that, really, couldn't you? I bet there'd be a market for it. Taxi! Nice taxi. Well, EVs really do come in all shapes and sizes these days, don't they? From the very big to the very small. Oh, this thing's cute. <laughs> Not sure a quick charger really needs a giant TV in it. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's... You know, old-fashioned thinking. The biggest problem with uh, electric vehicle quick chargers actually is honestly the lack of availability. So on the way back yesterday, we had to drive around the M25 and we stopped, well, we didn't stop at South Mims, which is good because there would have been a queue. Absolutely, the, the Tesla app told me that there would have been a queue. We did stop at the Toddington services where there were two EVs charging on the only two devices and another one waiting. And the problem with only two chargers and one waiting is you could easily end up waiting for an hour for a charger to come free. And by the time you've done that, you're not, you know, it's going to be a two hour stop, which is ridiculous. So we stopped at South Mims when there was a gap on the way there so that we didn't have to charge on the way back. And even though it charged extra, extra slowly because the battery was still over 60% full, we were still only there for like 15 minutes and it, it made the difference and meant that we didn't have to stop and charge again on the way back. And you know, I mean, <laughs> this is actually one of the interesting things about my car. It seems to have got a lot more efficient to the longer I've owned it. I mean, in summertime, I used to get 270 if I drove carefully, watt hours per mile, that is. And now, nine and a half years later, I get 270 in winter when I used to get 300 watt hours per mile. So it's a good 10, 
almost 15% sometimes more efficient in winter than it used to be. And it's actually more efficient in summer as well. So I'm not quite sure what that is. Is that, is that the drivetrain wearing in? I suppose it's possible, but I wouldn't have thought so. I think it's actually more likely to be something to do with the 40 plus software updates that Tesla have sent my car over the years. It's had a lot, and I think at least some of those have been efficiency improvements. Can I just ask, what's the range? Uh, it's 100 kilometers loaded at seven and a half tons. I'm here with Yad, who is going to talk to me about this amazing truck. Sure. So today we're here with the Ecanter first generation, so that's the truck we have on display today. Uh, it's the truck that we launched in 2017 and was actually the first generation or the first, very first electric truck ever launched uh, worldwide. So we have the claim to fame for the first seven and a half ton electric truck um, produced by an OEM. So we've had this truck now on the market for about six years and in that time we've sold over 350 units worldwide and done over 8 million miles of uh, emissions free driving. And this is actually, so this is your first gen product, Absolutely, yes, but you've, gen. you've moved things forwards quite yeah. considerably by the exactly. sounds of things. Yes we have. Uh, this year we had the pleasure of launching the second generation or the next generation e-counter as we call it. Um, so with this first generation we were very limited in terms of wheelbase options. There was one wheelbase at 3.4 meters, one battery type at 66 kilowatt hours and one cab type. We now have over 38 different variants with three different battery types, uh, two different cabins, six different wheelbases. So a really, a really flexible truck and one that's ready for the, the electric market now to suit a wide range of customers. I found it very interesting that you've actually moved the motor from the front where it yeah. is typically Correct. in trucks yeah. to right on the diff at the back yeah. which reduces drivetrain losses Absolutely. as you were saying. So, and of course it's quite easy to do with EVs. I mean that's brilliant. the yeah, whole exactly. advantage yes. of electric vehicles. So it gives us the flexibility to have different wheelbase types because we're not having to manufacture different prop shafts for different lengths. We can just mount the motor directly on in line with the wheels. So it gives us that flexibility to bring to market different wheelbases, uh, increases our, our drivetrain efficiency. As you say, there's, le there's fewer losses. It reduces weight, so again, improving our range and efficiency. So I, I drive a Tesla and sometimes I have been known to load it up to the gunnels. <laughs> Sure. And it, it's odd that actually the weight, assuming that you have on average a flat road, yes. I find generally speaking the weight actually makes a lot less difference than the, than the aerodynamics. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, it's less difference than people would think. You know, sure. people think, oh, you put a ton in something, yeah. it's not going to go very far. Yeah. But actually, I mean, I know. Okay, so my Tesla is. 2.2 tons anyway yes, yeah, so if I put 400 500 kilos of stuff in it it's still only a small percentage increase whereas presumably did you say this this one here will take seven tons did so you say? The, the GVW of the vehicle so the, the yep. total design weight is seven and a half tons the chassis in this guy is weighs about three and a half ton okay uh, the body is a ton so the total payload you can fit in the back of this body is three tons today and even when it's loaded up it will do that 100 kilometers of range as we've quoted oh, brilliant with quick charging too. We're actually owned by Daimler trucks mm. who also own Mercedes-Benz trucks. And when you look at their, their range wow. of electric trucks, we've got now almost megawatt charging cap cap uh, capability. We've got trucks that are designed to do you know, five, 600 kilometers of range. Mm. It's, it's really moved on and yeah, it's really gearing it? up. Yeah. This place is actually quite big. I'm surprised I didn't know that it was uh, that it was going on, to be honest. I'm not seeing a camper van, and that is what I would like to find in life. Maybe next year? Anyway, I might actually go and, um, uh, and see Yad at his, in his natural environment. Perhaps get to drive, maybe not the big truck, because unfortunately we just checked my driving license and I missed out on it by about five months, the sort of having the grandfather rights. So unfortunately that's not going to happen. But they do have a, a four, four point something tonner which actually does fall under the, the driving license that I have. So maybe get to give that a go, which would be pretty awesome. You know, electric drivetrains, it's the way to go. If I was gonna drive a truck, I'd want it to be electric. Of course, tires for EVs are a whole new thing because it, it's not just how well it wears and all the rest of it. You also got to be mindful of energy efficiency. And obviously if it's on a Formula E car performance as well so you know there's a lot of stuff to think about that looks pretty yes. 
Yeah, does it go as well as it looks? It does, full EV bike, um, 400 kilometer range, top speed, Amazing. 160 kilometers per hour. 400 kilometer range, that's pretty good for a bike. Well, that was fun. I've just discovered that my mic had stopped working a little while ago, so I don't know how much footage I've actually got from today. The show is over, however, so it is time to find V and head on home. I hope you've all enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram and X if you like. Links in the description. And I will see you all in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.